Good afternoon. Uh, in preparation for my uh, lectures this evening, and uh, which are actually on the transits of the outer planets and the psychology of them, and uh, but I thought I would follow up uh, my previous uh, video. Or I rather elongated the uh, sections on Mars and Neptune as separate planets. And uh, but uh, di didn't really uh, satisfactorily in my mind bring them together in terms of how they act within the individual. Now I used Jordan Peterson uh, last time because obviously he's on the world stage and we can see this dynamic operating him both at I think at a personal level and at a collective level. But I'd also like to introduce into this uh, talk today, this uh, little discussion or exploration of the T-square, because that Mars opposition Neptune has a square to Saturn from Saturn in, in Aquarius. And it's this that I think that we can see most clearly. I describe the Mars in Taurus uh, as uh, this uh, way that um, the, 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 the forceful uh, exposition of understanding. What he understands, of course, is based on a, a lot on the sun in Gemini and his Gemini uh, in, in his chart. I think with an Aries ascendant. So this 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 is this kind of forcefulness out, and this very very long and arduous journey in order to find that there's some substantial meaning on which um, activity in the world can be based. And it has a kind of religious flavour, but a more uh, somehow based in an existential flavour. This appeal, for example, this Jungian appeal, Jung had a um, Aquarius on his ascendant and a Saturn in Aquarius too. And I think that this affiliation uh, with Jung has something to do with the Saturn in Aquarius. Because... Aquarius has a lot to do with finding those fundamental principles of life that are on, or the, the archetypal uh, energies which bring the common humanity together rather than relying on any particular fixed dogma or cultural exposition of spirituality in the form of a religion. It is what is the basis of life, what is the basis of humanity. And I think this part of Jung and part of Peterson's is the scientist in him to, to find a, a strategy through the hard tasks of living or the hard tasks of being human. He talks a lot about his uh, existential ideas about being and non-being. Um, and within his presentations, there is this sense of finding uh, what it is in the struggle of humanity uh, that uh, that we can draw something from that and aim our activities in the face of these struggles of humanity. Not to turn away from the crosses of life and the things that we have to suffer. In many ways a very Aquarian, uh, sorry, a very Buddhist element too that, that life is suffering or that there's a Christian theme running through that we must carry our own cross and it's not the fact that there is a cross, it's just the fact that being human means to carry it or being human and somehow finding a a spiritual element in it that, that our duty towards life in many ways, which is a very Saturnian and a very Saturnian theme, is finding one's um, uh, duty and taking on life in a pragmatic, uh, strategic sense. It's a very uh, a, a good, a good showing, I think, of Mars Saturn, which if they get together, you have applied will of Mars and a strategic element in order to take it forward. Now, the opposition to Neptune, I, I want to talk also um, uh, about Neptune in its positive sense and what might be missing also from this uh, Mars-Saturn ganging up almost against Neptune that I see in, in Peterson. Um, Neptune is seen as that uh, uh, yearning, I think, in every every person. Now, I'd like to bring in Liz Green here, who wrote a wonderful book about Neptune, and it's a lot of the stuff that I've taken from it, and uh, a, a, a depth of analysis of the symbolism of Neptune and its experience in the individual. And she sees it as the longing for redemption, the redemption of suffering, and that Neptune, when it gets projected, can get projected into all kind of guru figures or saviour figures 
or, or cults or some kind of uh, very strong emotional experience, especially if it's in Scorpio. I, I, I think in the 1960s when it was, when Neptune was transiting Scorpio, there was the idea of this sexual release or this um, uh, uh, um, emptying out, this kind of cathartic release of self into the, the, the ecstasies of sexuality or perhaps even drug-induced experiences in order to go through some kind of um, um, uh, transformative experience inside oneself. There was a lot of trans new transformational um, psychologies coming out then. Uh, the primal scream, I think, was one where you went back into that uh, basic problem of of ex uh, of experience of coming out from the uterine waters into life. The birth experience, a kind of mini death, if you like, where when one comes from the divine, from the enveloping womb, um, and into life, into the realm of incarnation. So this whole theme of order and chaos, uh, his recent book, Twelve Steps, uh, for, um, Twelve Rules for Life, this, uh, an antidote to chaos, an antidote, which means um, a, a kind of Saturnian ideal uh, and, a, a, and a Mars ideal to take your will, to take your strategy, to do what you can to organize your life better. Because organization, order, a kind of a strategic element and taking things in small bits and using your will and determination to counteract this general tendency towards regressive floating or idealization of something or the projection of Neptune into um, at the moment being in Pisces and it was in Aquarius to uh, uh, an identity with the group there is this very powerful transit of Neptune in Pisces at the moment and if it is a representative of the longing for redemption there's this sense that if we get rid of all individuality and just blend it in some um, fused way uh, that, that, that we can be relieved of the complications of uh, conflict um, so that if we're just this or if we're just that or if we give up into a religious experience if anyone could be converted to the same religion or if everybody could just let down their guard and have no boundaries between people that there's somehow this this trend of of release and the uh, the finding of a common spiritual purpose in life might uh, bring us all together but Neptune always um, pushes out these mists of illusion or these solutions as as a possible way forward. Uh, but then, of course, there's always another sign that Neptune um, is going into and has come from. I think when Neptune was transiting Aquarius, there's this idea of the network society, that the sharing of global information and humanitarianism and globalism and all those forces which bring you bring humanity together as a whole was seen as the answer, was seen as the, the redemptive mode in, in, in a particular kind of political uh, ideology, in a particular mode of being. Of course, it has something to say. There's an important point in it that individualism by itself is in many ways up against um, the group. But there's always this dynamism between the individual and the collective, as Jung pointed out so well. So the whole theme of order versus chaos is shown in the Saturn versus Neptune, or Saturn square Neptune. I see in Jordan Peterson this Saturn in Aquarius very profoundly drawing upon the common themes of humanity in order to one bring one together with a strategic element, with a, a planned um, process by which we can be drawn together into, a, into the common heritage of not allowing to allow life to be get too chaotic or fused or blended. His answer in many ways is to do with the individuation qualities that Jung pointed out, is to try and see what it is that is your part in the collective. What part are you playing in relation to the whole? Mars in Taurus, of course, is do it bit by bit, build on solid program, build on facts, not on the unknown, not on things, not on ideologies, but on the substance of, of a, um, a definite basis 
and of course of which him he's when he's presenting himself when he's pushing out the idea that you can do things and motivating people in many ways to push forward and to do something deliberate and intentional and and and, and fix it in place and then from that point on go to the next thing so Neptune here, I think, in, in, in Peterson's mind, is generally seen in the wave of the collective at the moment towards self-victimization, towards envelopment in group identity, in which case the individual is lost, and the individual's own personal problems get projected out onto a political or a spiritual ideology or something else, that the problem is always out there. Now, what I think... Peterson um, doesn't include in in his um, fight, I suppose, against um, idleness and um, uh, a sense of despair that one can sink into uh, and hope that if one just kind of sits there or, or that the society might uh, um, uh, find a way of blending itself as one homogenous organism and so therefore in this, this in the common global identity if you like of that vision that Neptune in Aquarius brought in and then is somehow providing I think Aquarius the Pisces is very much like a, a, a an emotional Aquarius it brings us all together but it's it's very unclear and very undefined I think this is what might be behind the many complications of identity that we have in society at the moment and the the, the difficulties reconciling the um, total freedom of choice and uh, um, uh, so much information out there and that uh, the individual is very much connected to all of the whole through the realm of the internet but in joining in with groups we lose the capacity to self-reflect and to see our our own shadows our own darker sides the evil in ourselves that uh, Peterson so uh, um, I so identified in himself and said well I could have been a Nazi guard I could have been that person in power and and so um, by admitting his own shadow and bringing that to the fore and taking charge of it which I think his shadow used to be Neptune and now he's fighting the shadow out there in many ways um, uh, or taking it on with with a form of his own personal solution how he's found out uh, what things can resolve conflicts and tensions the other side of Neptune though which is not um, so easily seen is that um, there is when we take the symbolism into a, a more mystical sense of life and that there are such thing as the contemplative traditions both in the Christian mythologies as Sufism there's the um, and and the perhaps in Zen or there's the, the there's a counterpoint and a counterpoint um, but similarity to uh, uh, um, uh, religious belief systems is the spiritual element within them that there may be higher levels or, 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 or greater inclusive levels of consciousness which does lose touch or, or, or places the ego, the individual in its own place that it isn't the only thing in the world, that the uh, solution to or individualism as opposed to individuation, there's an important point about that, because individuation achieves a sense of self-understanding for what it can then provide to the collective, whereas individualism tends to um, um, bind the ego in, in terms of its own belief structure and values and doesn't really move beyond any transpersonal or transcendent states. So Neptune also has a spiritual pull and, and, and says there are things beyond the ego. And here I, I think the work of the early work of Ken Wilbers is very important, that there are pre pre-ego states and trans-ego states and very much one these the mystical longing for God the henosis of the Christian mystics sometimes looks like a, a a desire to be away from life to be back into the womb and so these two uh, states can appear together but they're very different in one the transcendence towards non-dual reality and the the recognition of identity of humanity as a whole in oneself 
does not mean the destruction of the ego. It means the transcendent states, the movement beyond uh, contemplative states and, and those achieved in certain uh, meditative practices uh, where one becomes one with the Tao, which is a very similar idea uh, to becoming one with, um, one with the uh, all-pervasive ground of consciousness, if you like, and having that non-dual Advaitic tradition move through us as in the form of Sri Ramana Maharshi. Um, so Neptune also does pull us beyond that. And I feel that um, uh, 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 Peterson's um, uh, work, as valuable as it is, and it's, 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 it's an amazing uh, contribution in helping so many hundreds of thousands of people, I think, think differently in the face of this a chaos of the world to sort out your own house first to sort out your own room get get that in order first in order so that you uh, limit your projections and f you know uh, in a way occlude your own shadow processes by projecting them onto what's wrong in the world as opposed to dealing with, with them inside which by the way is a very Jungian idea that we must deal with our own shadow first before we go out and try and meddle with other people. But what is missing here, I think, is a, uh, and perhaps to come in Peterson's um, life, as particularly as Neptune comes up to square his sun in a couple of years, the, the, there may be a, a beginning or a, a, a gradual drawing back from the collective, lest he gets, get lost himself within it. There will be a gradual, perhaps, overexposure to come and uh, a, a, a kind of philosophical or perhaps personal retreat from life in order to recuperate himself in this great uh, effort that he is making, uh, uh, not just for himself, but on behalf of, a, I think, a, a genuine empathy with those that are struggling against the forces of chaos, both inwardly and outwardly. <laughs>